Cheers, welcome to the very first, you know this, Charlie Farley, very first podcast for Wix in the Mix. I am the first. Yes. So I, uh, um, I looked at the entire I'm roster and I said, I want Charlie Farley, because <laughs> I hear he's going to be in town today. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Good to see you, my friend. Cheers. What have you been Good up to? to? I haven't too. seen you in forever. Uh, you know, the fall comes, you know, deer season shows up, and I disappear. Like, I've got a pretty good habit of doing that. So, I've been hunting, spending time with family. Did uh, you know, have you heard the story about um, uh, Duck Dynasty guy, Paul, or Phil, the dad? Uh-uh. Terry Bradshaw was the backup quarterback for LSU. Mm -hmm. He backed up Duck Dynasty Phil, but Phil wouldn't play because it interfered with Duck season. Well, so you completely understand that. Yes, like, yeah, we, you know, backwoods folks got the priorities right. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you're an avid hunter. Everyone knows that, of course. Uh, oh, yeah. What can you, can you put which is most important to you? Is it, is it fishing? Is it hunting? Which? Well, it's family, music, hunting, fishing. And I'm in in that order pretty much, you yeah. know, so. But I do love to hunt and fish, like, all the time, you know. If I'm not with my kids or yeah. my wife or up here doing interviews with Wix, then I'm on the lake or up in a tree somewhere. Well, we're shooting beers. That works, right? Yeah. Cheers, cheers. Cheers, man. Cheers, indeed. So now, do you find that when you're in those, you know, obviously in a tree stand or in a boat? I mean, is that like a, a very creative palette for you? Tree stand is. I've, I've wrote lots of songs sitting in tree stand, but not a boat because I bass, I tournament fish all the time. My brain's constantly thinking when I'm on the water because I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to figure out what the fish are doing next or you know, where I'm going to catch the next five, six pounder at, so. Now, and that's something new, that's the uh, FLW, the Forest L Wood, um, is it bass, right? It's the BFL, is what, it's the FLW series is BFL, which is, uh, for those of y'all that don't know anything about fishing, it's bass tournament, I mean, it's all about largemouth bass fishing. I mean, you catch some smallmouth here and there and stuff like that, but it's mainly largemouth bass and you do a, you know, people go out and they compete against each other. I fished the BFL last year in on the Oklahoma side, which they call it the Okie Division, and I got some money in one of the tournaments, and it was a great time. Now, is that a team thing or is that a solo? It's solo, it but what it is, it's like, okay, you they put teams together. They do it with a computer, though. So basically... The, the night before or the evening before the tournament, everybody meets up at like a local Walmart and they get all the anglers to come there. They Most anglers have already paid their, you know, dues for the tournament before mm -hmm. then, but if not, then they'll pay. And the, you have a boater and a non-boater. And last year I fished a non-boater. So what they do is say we, I think there was like 200 boaters in the Okie division last year. And so you have 200 boaters and you pair them with 200 non-boaters and the computer will process all that and they just kind of match them randomly. And then they send you out a text and you get a text that's got your partner's number and name and stuff like that and you just text them like, hey, we're going fishing together tomorrow. <laughs> so it's like one guy's got the boat and one guy. Yeah. So is that like a like a glorified golf caddy almost? Like, <laughs> right, I, I'm going to carry your boat and right. I'll drive you around here, buddy. Right. It's... It's a lot of fun though. Uh, there was a cat I fished, I, think, I believe it's pronounced Skiatook over there in Oklahoma. And the cat that I went with, he could drive a freaking boat. Like, we was driving across the main lake and I see a wall of trees and I'm thinking, we're gonna go to the edge of the timber and fish along there. And we hit the trees wide open. <laughs> Dude, I am scared to death. I actually put some video of it on my Instagram, and everybody's like, holy crap. So he knows where he's going. But yeah, you he, have no he, idea. He had went, like, oh, gosh. the week before or something and actually charted out the creek channel with his GPS. So like, there wasn't any danger in it. But right. for somebody that never been on ski a took before, right. and I'm running through a wall of freaking trees at <laughs> 70 mile an hour. You don't know what like, that guy did last night. No. <laughs> How late was he? Yeah, out? actually, I did. He was up playing poker and drinking. Oh, that's not what you want to hear. <laughs> that's not it at all. It's a so, good time, though. So you ended up winning that, huh? No, I didn't win, but I did get a check. Which well, is, hey, that's a that's, win. That's, that's, I mean, 
you know, out of 200 non-boaters, and I got 19th place, so. Nice. That's helps, not bad. Helps offset some of the traveling costs, I'm sure, right? Yeah. Beautiful, and you get to do what you love. Well, you know, you know, I tell everybody, it don't matter how much money you make fishing, you're never going to come out ahead, because anytime you make right. some money fishing, you're going to be spending it, you know? <laughs> right. Spending it on fishing. <laughs> So that's been taking up a lot of your time. Now, what is the season on that? That's just kicking up? Just kicking off, and unfortunately, I was wanting to fish all of them. I'll be fishing the Arky Division this year. Uh, I was wanting to fish all of them. The first one's March the 5th, and unfortunately, I didn't get the BFL schedule until it was, t like, I'd done schedule to show for March 5th, and then the mm -hmm. next one's April 23rd. I'd already had a show schedule for April 20th, so I might have to miss the first two, but uh, I believe it's the third one. I think it's Dardanelle, maybe? Anyway. And that it, runs all through the fall, right? Anyway, yeah, it'll go up until September or right. October. Wow. So. And uh, do they have the big culmination? I know it used to be like at the, uh, I think they did it at the Superdome, or, no, or uh, not the Superdome, they did it at, uh, uh, in Shreveport there. At the, oh, the you're talking arc. about the Bassmaster Classic. Yeah, yeah. Is that what that, are you involved with that? No, that's, okay. um, that's BASS, which is a different, uh, that's a lot of fishing letters she throws around. <laughs> Just, that's the BF. Okay. <laughs> BFL, I need a chart. BASS, FLW, Brayback. This, this is like NASCAR with letters. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't know nothing about NASCAR other than my stepdad loves Jeff Gordon. and he 24. Watched, I, he, why do I know that? Was, has, did, did he retire? I think so. I don't know. Well, did he? Yeah. Dang. I won't get to see my stepdad stand in front of the screen cussing no more while he's watching. <laughs> These cars are going around in circles. He's standing there. Go, USOB. Go. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't see nothing going on here. <laughs> yeah. So we got the uh, new record, which I finally got a copy of. It's amazing how hard you have to work to try and get, uh, and to get some of this. And you work on the label. Ain't that crazy? It's unbelievable. I, I, it's, it really is. But let me tell you, it's <laughs> fantastic. Well, uh, you. I mean, I just got into it, you know. Uh, last night, so I haven't had time to like you know spend with it with a right. cold beer and uh, sitting around in the sun and <laughs> giving it a good proper listening experience. But uh, it's called uh, All I've Been Through. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and I got to tell you before you start, I got to preface this because you you realize like everything that's going on right now in the music business as far as you know all this hoopla about Chris Stapleton saving the format and it's kind of like the recoil from the bro, bro country thing and now it's like going way back school to old school legitimate country kind of right. thing and not the radio stuff. I think to me uh, there seems to be like almost a, a, a parallel sort of backlash going on and I think I mean I attribute it to you a little bit because you basically just called everybody out and said hey mudding and trucking and we're just as cliche as some of these other uh, bro country guys are. Give me something more and I really feel like that this record you've kind of done that. Well and it's like... Uh, Was that like a goal when you started out? No, I just always write from the heart or I write from experiences and all I've been through, the, all I've been through you know is obviously the album name, but that is the title track to the CD. Well, when I wrote that song, I wrote it because I was tired of hearing every song that I was hearing that people in this genre that they place us in, every song that I heard it talked about the same thing. Same thing, over and over. Over and over, and still. That's, I mean, and especially with younger artists that are coming up, they're looking, because that's what they've heard. Mm -hmm. And so now it's like taking all the creativity out of it to where it's not about a song and making somebody feel a certain type of way, but it's like every song, let's party, let's get in the truck, let's right. go mud. And I was just trying to say, you know, you can be more than a one trick pony and be, and be successful. You don't have to fit into the mold. And that's kind of where I went with all I've been through. I don't feel like my music is, uh, the same as anyone else's, and I don't think anybody should be. So. Oh, and I, I don't think there's any way. Like, there's some artists that you're right. That's you could just switch them out with that uh, that other song, and and you wouldn't know the difference. But I don't think that applies with you at all. I mean, your style is completely different. It's a it's completely your own. Um, that I. I I like it, like I said, because you're almost like calling people out. It's like, all right, yeah, you got a big truck and you live in the uh, country. What mm -hmm. else? What else you got for me? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. let's go. Well, I, I feel like any true artist, you know, people that write songs, you know, like actual songs with meaning, like nobody's going to get offended by it either. And I feel like if it's a, if I was an artist and another artist said that, I'd be like, 
Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I ain't even thought about it. Obviously, nobody's thought about it. There'd be another song like that. You right, know? right. But um, I don't know. I just felt like it needed to be said, and so I said it. It ended up being a title track to my CD. But, you know, everything kind of falls into place when I start writing. It's kind of weird how it all turns out, but I didn't. I mean, I didn't write that song thinking this is going to be the title track to my album. And Oh, of course it, not. Right. You know, and then the whole the whole CD fit the that all I've been through, you know. To just the organic process yeah, of it coming right, around. Right, because, I, you know, I've got songs about my sister on there. I've got songs about, you know, I've lived in the South, so I have a, two Southern songs on this album, you know, Southern Summertime and Southern Comfort. Uh, it's just about, what I tell everybody is Hog Heaven, like when I come out with that, Hog Heaven was telling you, this is what I do, and then this album's telling you this is who I am. That's a great, that's a great way to put it. And this would be a good time to let everyone know, hey, if you're digging this podcast, head over to the AverageJoeSuperstore.com. Use promo code TAP1. That's T-A-P, the number one, for 20% off your final purchase. And that dish says in Cypress Spring, that's all the great Average Joe's artists. Lax, Charlie Farley, Moonshine Bandits, all your mud-loving friends. Um, what have you been listening to music-wise, uh, just personally on your own, uh, leading up to this record? Like, are you, are you, do you, do you step away from the genre? Do you go and check out what everyone else is doing, or you don't give a shit? It's just Charlie Farley. I'll be honest with you. I really do not listen to music. It's weird. <laughs> like, I don't. I don't it's know. It's actually not that weird, though. Well, I thought it was maybe. I, hey, I did stand-up comedy for years. And I don't listen to comedy. You know See, what I mean? It's, it's, it's sort of the same thing. It's like, step away. I don't, yeah, I don't, that's what, maybe it ain't weird. Well, you've been picking up the guitar oh, uh, yeah. a lot more, which is awesome as well. How right. do, tell me about what, what, it's, what brought uh, that about. It's coming along slowly, but surely. Uh, you know, when I first picked it up, I just thought, I'll have this thing whooped out in three months, you know, it won't be no big deal. <laughs> And what are you going, four months now, five? <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> a little on bit six. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> now, are you taking, are you just playing by ear? You got someone who's giving you No, some... I'm just learning everything on my own YouTube videos. Like, any time I decide that I want to learn a different song, YouTube, acoustic, da -da -da. Right there, everything you need. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm trying to learn everything on my own. Uh, you know, I started out just strumming, now I'm getting to where I can pick. And so it's coming along, it's just... Good Lord, it's, I mean, it's hard. Of course it is. And I, <laughs> I never gave guitar players the credit they the credit deserve. They. <laughs> and now I do. Guitar players, y'all are my hero. Guitar <laughs> hero. Like, you're my hero. It takes Because I, I can't of... do it yet. I'm working on it. Hey, the fact that you're working on it, though, that's the thing. Um, I feel like it'll make me a better songwriter, honestly. That's why I wanted to pick it up. Sure. I absolutely believe it and would. And plus, being up here in Nashville, like, why are you gonna be in Nashville and not know how to play a guitar for? Now, are you uh, are you doing some writing with other people? Oh yeah. Um, Every time I come to Nashville, I'm setting up writing writing appointments, trying to write with other people. How does that for you as an artist? Is it just like you know immediately if this is crap, or where you give it a chance, or you bring ideas to the table? What how does it work for you? Most of the time, we well, of course, when I go into a writing. I've always got lots of ideas. Right. I have a memo on my phone that probably has 80 to 100 different song ideas. And so I go into every write with a lot of ideas, that, you know, that we could bounce off, you know, whoever I'm writing with, just bounce ideas off each other and then start writing. And most of the time, yeah, I do know before it's over, is this a, like, do I like this song? Do I love this song? Like, is it just okay or is it great? Is it usually a chorus and then you build out or? It depends, <clears throat> you know, since I already have the idea, you know, I told you I had the memo on my phone. Since, so since I already have the idea, most of the time, I write visually in my head before I ever like write anything down. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like for instance, I just wrote a fishing song yesterday and uh, I envisioned a kid growing up on the lake and getting to watching his dad tournament fish and then he wanted to do it and then at the end of the song he's doing it like mm -hmm. he dreamed of being a tournament angler and at the end of the day he was and like he's on tv now and so he made it there but i visualized that and then i just started writing and everything kind of falls into place for me when i do it like that because i already see it so I'll, 
just like writing what I see. I just like the idea of the, the you know, for those of you guys, don't, I mean, I know the Charlie, Fa Charlie Farley fans know because you're getting damn two million um, <laughs> spins on Spotify a month. I mean, that's incredible, <laughs> which that tells me, that's hey, awesome. somebody hears one Charlie song and is like, I got to hear what this Thank guy's about. Because <laughs> your style is completely, I just like the idea of you coming to Nashville and just kind of sitting down with a guy and just be like, yeah, I got, you know, soft spoken, got this idea, you know, man, I think I might do this. And then he like goes into a chorus and then you just start <laughs> just like, <laughs> just like blasting <laughs> syllables at him and just start spitting with this guy's like, what do I do with this? You know? <laughs> so it doesn't happen like that, huh? Yeah, no, <laughs> no. And most of the time when I sit down, like, I don't know, when I pick up an acoustic guitar, it's like, it's, it's hard for me to rap over, not because I can't, but because it's not, it don't feel normal almost, mm -hmm. you know? And so I have to make myself, like when I'm writing a song, I have to decide before I go in, are you gonna make this a song to where you're rapping on it or is this just gonna be straight country? Cause if, if I pick it up and not think about it and just start, I'm gonna be singing country song. That's all I'm gonna mm -hmm. do, I'm not gonna rap at all. <laughs> I get done with the song and be like, uh, we need to put a bridge in so I can rap on this. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> And uh, you're headed to South by Southwest this year. Uh, yeah. Going to go see what that's about, huh? Yeah, I ain't never been. I heard it was amazing, so. I haven't been in, in recently, but when I went, yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. great. Yeah, you know how we got into every bar? This is before it got as big as it is now, but me and a guy from Atlantic Records went down there, and uh, we got into, we had no credentials whatsoever. We had a chicken patty in a Ziploc bag and he was wearing it around his neck and we would go up to the front of bars and they'd be like, where's your laminate? We'd be like, don't have one, we got a chicken patty. <laughs> and he'd be like, all right. <laughs> and I swear we got in some more bars with a chicken patty than you could ever imagine. So wow. I, think they've, uh, I think they've heightened security a little bit since then. then but <laughs> Well, uh, good luck That's on South by Southwest. So, I mean, you're spreading the Charlie Farley uh, gospel. Yeah, how's the touring going? You're, uh, you, you're branching out? You yeah, it's picking it. up. Uh, we're, we just added a couple of dates in Ohio, uh, one in Oklahoma. It's like, I steady, you know, at the end of the year and the first of the new year, it's like always slow. What do you like most? Do you like playing new venues or do you like going back to comfortable ones that you've been that you know it's like built in awesome? Anywhere. Yeah. Anytime. I don't care. <laughs> just like get me in the door. The get me somewhere history. where there's a lake yeah. so I can fish in the day and play at night. <laughs> <laughs> no, like the the Arbuckle Off Road Park over there in Oklahoma. I've actually got a show coming up there with uh, my buddy Demon, Demon Jones. Of, Boy, they love Demon there. Yeah. And so uh, I got a show coming up there with him. And the last time I did a show there, I stayed at, I forget what hotel I stayed at there, but I went the day before, got out, and they got a nice lake up there, and got horse rides, and my wife's big into riding horses, so we went and rode horses, and then played putt-putt golf. It was like a mini vacation. Oh, you know? good. That's the way it should be. That's the best right? kind of work there is. Yeah, I know it. Um, so let's talk about this record, then. Um, we're going to do a cut-by-cut cut later, uh, here in a little bit, doing on the tracks, but just what is your, like... For you, what, and I know, you know, you get the old doll, you're trying to tell me which one of my kids is better looking, but for you, track-wise, like, what was the most surprising? What was the most, uh, um, I mean, you told us about the title track, of course, but what was, like, the most gratifying song, or is there any kind of cool story, like, you start with, like, this is a stupid idea, and then later you're like, this is the best song I've ever done, you know? Well, not quite, but uh, a song I have on there is called Country Is This, and everybody, like That's for, the for years I've been watching people on the internet, you know, oh, my truck's bigger than yours, or it's like, does that really matter, you know? <laughs> and so I'm like, you know what, to hell with it. I'm writing a You Ain't Country Is Me track, but it's going to be funny. Like, I'm going to say some of the stupidest stuff. I, I said, duct tape water hose, duct tape pantyhose, even got duct tape on the radiator, yo, you know? <laughs> And so I was going to say some of the <laughs> dumbest stuff, and it was a joke. But that's the one that's got the tick line, right? Yeah. Yeah, see that? I mean, but how, honestly, <laughs> honestly, how, how, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good uh, bar for what country is. It's uh, <laughs> a tick that I p pulled off my dog's ear. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty country, you know? Yeah, and so, what, what, I mean, what was funny about it is it started out as a joke, and I was drinking at the studio, I was at my studio at the house, 
and me and a buddy was drinking and laughing and I'm writing and we're having a good time and I record it and I send it to Jay from Five Star and he's like, we're cutting that. I was like, no, we ain't. I was just kidding, man. Like, don't take me serious. And then a few months later when I come to cut the album, they was like, we're doing country as this. I was like, really? He said, yes, I love it. And then after we cut it, you know, I really like it too. Cool. Good, good, good. What so else? It started else? out as a joke and ended up, you know, good. So, uh, and I think the next song, the Red Rose, that I wrote for my sister. <clears throat> okay, that's the one. Right, right. That's a, that's a, that's a different angle for you. Yeah, and it's, um, you know, I always write from the heart and I always speak on personal experiences. I think that's why a lot of people relate to me because, you know, everybody's alike in one way or another. So, mm -hmm. but uh, I wrote the, that song Red Rose with uh, Noah. Yeah, Gordon, who's featured on the track, and uh, my buddy Jay from Five Star. And by the way, Jay and Ko from Five Star recorded every song on this album except one. They recorded every song on Hog Heaven. Them are my boys. So shout out to Five Star. We appreciate y'all. DJ Cannon Banyan, Stephen Lemons, thank y'all too. But to get back to Red Rose, uh, you know that song's really, really deep to me and really personal. And because it's about my sister, and it's kind of like I Is wrote it older songs. sister, or younger sister. She'd been my younger sister, and um, but like I I wrote songs for her in the past, like but. I wanted one that was like, this is legit. You know, this is going on an album that people across the world is going to hear. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like my, it's almost like I'm, you know, not forgetting where I come from mm -hmm. because I'm still putting pieces of my life in my work. So it's really personal and mental. It means a lot to me. So anytime anybody asks me, what's your favorite song on the album? It's that one. And it's just because it's so personal. To sure, me. sure, sure. So you've been wanting to write that for uh, for a while. Yeah, I've wrote. Or has it been something you started? I tell you what happened. I'll tell you exactly how that song come about. Uh, it was it would have been her twenty first birthday. Me and my brother was up in the woods and like you know days like that is pretty tough on us. So mm -hmm. we was up there in the woods and we're drinking, just reminiscing on old times. And I sent Jay from Five Star a message and you know told him that it would have been my sister's twenty first birthday. I said need to make me a beat if you don't mind. <clears throat> like an hour later, he's like, it's in your inbox. And I was like, and I listened to it, I was like, oh wow. Like, cause I told him I wanted a storytelling type of something. Yeah, type yeah. Beat. And yeah, true to five star form, he did it. <laughs> well, if he was only as good at ping pong as he was at producer makers. <laughs> Is he not good at ping pong? Uh, he keep played one time and I beat him and he was so mad and I'm just like, yes. Because he had to leave. He was like, you could tell, he could just see it in his eyes. He's like, I want to play one more game. So, <laughs> yeah, he's a competitor. He's a good yeah, he's a good player too. He likes to play defensive and I like to play a little bit more offensive. So it was a it was a it was a fun connection there. <laughs> but yeah, I always notice that producers, anybody who spends time in studios, they're they're damn good at ping pong. <laughs> I'll be saying. They're usually there. I have to remember that. Pretty good on it. Um <laughs> I'm excited for the album to come out. Who you got on this record? Oh, man, Daniel Lee, Alex Hall, Noah Gordon, Colt Ford. Colt Ford! You, uh, are you and Demon doing something on this? Or you did something on his? I, I've done something on uh, Demon. Right, I knew there was something like that. Yeah. Because cool. uh, you guys did Raw on his too. record, which is one of my favorites. Right. Well, I'm. Glad you like it. I, I, I love that song. And I like too. performing it. Like when we're on stage together doing that, it's crazy because the song's got so much energy anyway. Yeah. And then Dem Demon's an up tempo type performer, as, <laughs> and I am I too. So it's like just on a freaking volcano waiting to erupt, you know? <laughs> so it's. <laughs> we were talking about Demon earlier, and uh, one of the guys we work with, he's like, he's like, yeah, Demon's like the ultimate artist. He's like a. He's like one of those artists that's kind of like a pop bottle that you shake up. He's like, that's a demon. He's ready to go as soon as he's got a record to go. You know what I mean? It's like, that's a great example. It's just like, come on, I'm ready to blow this thing. Which fits him perfectly. Um, so demon and, uh, so not a lot of, um, you know, other artists so much. Like that seems to be a thing too, is like, 
people jumping around. I mean, I just found a bunch of stuff. I've been doing some Spotify stuff, and I just found a bunch of things with you that I'm like, I'll be damned, there's Charlie Farley. Now, how does that work for you as an artist? You just meet someone, and they're like, hey, I want you to be on a track, or do you have some interest in them prior to that, or someone manages There's a lot of different ways it can all come about. Uh, the, the song with Alex Hall was funny is up until right now, whatever today is, the second of February. Wednesday, yeah. I haven't even met Alex Hall, and I told you that I got a song with him. Wow! And it's what because if he's a jerk? He he may be. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I've never met the guy, but he can sing like crazy. So he, if he's a jerk, fans, I'm sorry. <laughs> he can he sing. can sing. He's a singing <laughs> son of a jerk. <laughs> oh no! But I heard he was a pretty good dude. I don't know. But uh, he was working with Jay over at Five Star, and they had wrote some songs together, and Jay pitched that song uh, to me and was like, check it out, let me know what you think. And I loved it. And Which so one is that? I love Harder. Yeah, okay. And I'd done my thing to it, and now it's on an album. That's a pretty, pretty badass song, too. I like it. Yeah. And you know, it's different. That's probably the standout song to me. Uh, I would say as that. As far yeah. as if you're listening to the album, like what song just pops out that don't sound like any of the rest of it? Yeah. Like that song just because it's, I'm not rapping, rapping on it. It's more like, you know, the talky rap. Mm -hmm. I'm like talking on it more than I am. Just da 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 I'm right. not snapping on it, you know? Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's... I think that's what it called for because it's more of a mellow uh, story type track and there I go again telling stories. <laughs> hey, everyone likes a damn story, that's for sure. I mean, that's why people love music, right? I love music. Like I, That's why I love country music growing up. It told a story I could relate to. Yeah, and give me something that I don't see coming, you know? Right. Um, again, we get oh, back yeah, to like the... I like them th curveball songs. That's, yeah, yeah, you know? I agree. You uh, you got the uh, Average Joe's comic. You're going to be uh, coming out in uh, issue number eight, I believe. That's what I've heard. I know. They, they're tight-lipped about it. They won't tell you, right? I'm not, I ain't even seen it. Do you know what your superpower is? I'm supposed to be a tornado or something, right? Arkansas tornado. Yeah. Yeah, it turns out they screwed up, though, on the dimensions, kind of like on Spinal Tap, and you're actually in a glass of water, and then we just, <laughs> we just shake you up, and you just spin for a second. You're like, go get him, Charlie. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna put the hurt on these fish in this bowl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, can, I can mess you up in a bowl or in a cup. Yeah, I can. I can only imagine though what like, what am I gonna be doing in this? I don't know. I tried to pin Shannon down earlier. He's been tight-lipped on it. He here? He's here today. Yeah, he's in the meeting. <laughs> we gotta just go bust in. We <laughs> hey, we want some answers on this yeah, comic. We're not leaving until we get some. Uh, yeah, I just wonder what, what I'm going to be doing as a tornado. I mean, other than tearing everything just in the world apparently up. Apparently, you're the, the, the pull the switch. All right, somebody just wrecked this whole place right now. <laughs> <laughs> Someone go piss off Charlie. <laughs> We're about ready to start. get the tornado going. Um, what about New Year's resolutions? Do you, have, do you make any? Do you have good holidays? Yeah, actually, uh, I had a chance to book a show for New Year's. And I didn't do it just so I could spend some time with my family because... Uh, I've heard that, you know, whatever you do at the first year, what are you, what the rest of your year look like. And so I just want to spend some time with my family. So I yeah. hung out. But I did make some uh, resolutions, you know. Uh, Have you broke any? Have you stuck with any? Well, I, I've broke every one of them. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, I decided yes. January was a trial month. Yeah, if it really starts yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it started yesterday. All right. Dude. And what are they no, now? No, it starts today. Same ones? Crap. See, this beer. Like, I, I got to stay away from the party scene. Oh, well, I don't agree with Franklin your Franklin Embry sir. got me last Frankly, night. you know what my resolution is? To stay away from people with resolutions like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sticking true to mine. Well, it's not not <laughs> drinking. My resolution was don't party every day like I used to. Right. You're, not too, you're too old to do that, right? No, I ain't too old to do that. <laughs> I don't know. You came in here a little slow, buddy. Yeah, I will tell you, I'm not 18. I, I'm not. I can't do that 18 God, thing. Thank God, I'm not 18 anymore. No, <coughs> no, I wouldn't want to go back there. Actually, what do you uh, what do you miss about high school? Uh, the craziness. I was the class clown. Like I, I was always doing something crazy, especially junior and senior year, because we went to every football game. Like I didn't play football, mm -hmm. but 
me, oh man, it was like five or six of us that just ride together and go to all these ball games and drink and act crazy. And then, you know, Friday's a big deal when you're in high school because the game's coming up and everybody's pumped up. And I always wore like, I had spirit jeans mm -hmm. that I wore that the whole senior class signed. Uh -huh. You still have them? <laughs> yeah, I still awesome. got them. That's great. <laughs> How many people do you have in your graduating class? I don't what 80 something like yeah, that see that's like me i love it <laughs> yeah I like 80 something too there's something different too, and it may not that have been 500 that many. people that right you know 400 beat you up all the time <laughs> <laughs> that's what it always seems like it's, yeah. like it's like you can't beat everyone up in class 86 it's right like, hey man leave him alone uh-huh it's you know everybody's i don't i'm sure your situation's the same but you know when you grow up and graduate from a class like that you know like you know everybody's business you know what everybody's doing probably for the rest of their lives. Right. And, <laughs> and with Facebook, definitely. Now. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, the, definitely. That's the crazy part. Yeah. Um, so what's, uh, what's, what are you looking forward to this year for, uh, for Charlie Farley, besides the new record, which obviously we're well, yeah, obviously, everyone's pumped about that. The new record, uh, I've got a few things up my sleeve. Uh, it's going to be pretty big. I can't, it's growing. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk about it right I now, but 2016 is going to be amazing. It's like, you know, my, my motto for this year is now or never. It's like, go get it now or you ain't never going to get it. So, right. Like, you've been w w working for your whole life. Yeah. This is the year. So I'm pretty, I'm really excited about it. I'm excited to go out and fish all the BFL tournaments that I can. So uh, the fishing thing, I mean, obviously it's great when you can, you know, get paid or at least uh, have the luxury of being on the road and take a break and do your other uh, uh, favorite love, I guess, right. you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty fortunate, I ain't gonna lie. I mean, it's because it you get to see new uh, fish, new holes, so to speak. Yep, it's, uh, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm very blessed and, you know, I'm glad to, uh, to get to fish the BFLs and, uh, you know, work with people like Pro Patterns and well, the pro pattern. So now you've got the uh, the theme song, right? Mm -hmm. The exposed. Right? Exposed, and we're actually coming out with a new one. See, when I when I when I made the other one, like nobody put guitars and, and raps and like when I made that one was right about the time Colt like blew up. Well, before that, nobody even knew any producers that could do what they was doing. You mm -hmm. know? But and so I made it, and it sounds like it's more. It's not as country as my music is, and so we. Was, I was like, you know what? Why don't we revamp this and make it more Charlie Farley? And so that's what we're doing. And I actually just came from Kentucky, uh, recorded a new song, and it's amazing. Like I ain't gonna lie, it's it's incredible. Uh, I don't know when it'll come out, but I do know that it will be aired on NBC Sports. Over 50 times this year. Does so. it have a title? I can't tell you oh, that. Right all right. <laughs> Good. Can't tell you that, but if y'all know Timmy Horton, if you know Timmy Horton's fishing show, be watching because he is the narrator for Pro Patterns. And so, of course, it's going to air on his show. Now, how do you, uh, how, how, is, is fishing, is that something you did with your, your dad, your grandpa kind of thing? Like, how did yeah, you? Yeah, you know, you? my. My grandpa always took me fishing. It was, and it, most of the time it started out catfishing and we always ran trot lines and <clears throat> yo-yos and stuff like that. But he, he messed up and took me bass fishing in a tournament one time. It was a take a kid fishing tournament. And uh, I, I think I was 12 maybe. But I ended up catching one over five pounds that day, which was the biggest bass caught in the adult or the kids division. Wow. And uh, I, were was, I was hooked. Yeah, if there wouldn't have been <laughs> four or five boats right around to my grandpa, he was like, I'm glad people's here to see you catch that because nobody would have believed us. <laughs> <laughs> but after tail. that, I was hooked. And, and, and like you said, hooked, yeah. literally. But uh, after that, it was just one thing led to another. And, and now my grandpa don't hardly bass fish at all. I think he was just doing that to get his grandkids out there and bass fish. But... You know, it rubbed off on me in a good way, and now I'm out there fishing, fishing tournaments, 
trying to do whatever I can to, to what's work that edge. What's the mindset difference between then and being just being a kid out there, and now you're like, all right, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, this is competition. Yeah, well, you know. you know, it started out, you know, when you're kids, you don't think about, I mean, you're just there having fun. And it's still fun now, it's a lot of fun, matter of fact, but there's a lot more, there's a, a huge thought process that goes on throughout the entire day. Because fishing, the, the bite can change minute to minute on any given day. Like, you really don't know. Is it considered uh, bad uh, to, to pee out of the boat? Will that affect your fishing? Like, no. it doesn't mess with it at all? <laughs> no. Because, you know, you go out with a deer hunter and you pee and they lose their mind. Right. Because you just You know, I, I used to be all big into scents and stuff when I was bow hunting. But after my brother killed a 177 Boone and Crockett, Buck. I don't know what that means. Why? <laughs> what does that mean? A huge deer. A Boone and, <laughs> Boone and Crockett? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my brother killed a huge deer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you know what a, lar a, a group of large men is called? <laughs> <laughs> so he killed it how old and why? So he killed, <laughs> so he killed his huge deer and uh, <laughs> he was wearing blue jeans and a white t-shirt sitting on the ground. <laughs> so it's not and everybody else, you know, hiding in trees with all <laughs> kinds of scent stuff on. And he was talking on a cell phone nonetheless. <laughs> Hang on a second. Yeah. <laughs> and this deer run up 10 steps from him and it killed him. Maybe was, it was just a dumb deer. A I was big, like, dumb you know deer. what? Yeah, because he got big by being, no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was like, you know what, forget it. I'm not doing it. And, I've actually had better luck without using it. And scent companies out there probably hating me right now. <laughs> you're, you're turning down the I may right. should quit this. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> this part of the project is brought to you by Scents. Oh, but the, the, the scent that I come up with, though, it works. <laughs> what is it, part Bud Light? I want to come up with an outdoor lifestyle brand now, so I might not should have said that. <laughs> That's all right. You should. Hey, you know what? I'll come up with something that does work. <laughs> what, what would we call it? Uh, Gnarly Charlie Farley? Yeah. It's got a stink, right? Get back, something. Get back? Yeah. <laughs> Get it, girl. Get back. Get back. <laughs> Man, always good to catch up with you, hey, see what's happening. Thanks for having me, buddy. The wonderful Charlie Farley. Uh, all I've been through, new album coming out. Do you have a release date yet? They give you that? I don't know that I can say. Well, I guess since I'm here, I can say April the 8th. April the 8th. <laughs> all right. Well, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll uh, have this thing out and ready to go, letting everyone know. Thanks for, uh, thanks for being my first podcast. Yeah. How'd it go? Did it feel good? It felt great. Good? You don't have to go to the clinic or anything. That's it. No, We're done. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's an amazing backdrop y'all got here. I know. You know why this happened? Uh, I was, uh, grandma's in the other room watching her story, so I thought I'd just come in here and see what's on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> just thought I'd ton it up. <laughs> yeah, we're tonning the battery. And apparently we don't have a, we didn't quite. You know what's funny is this actually looks like a, a battery meter here for, you know, those things that are used to start your car. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining me on the uh, very first Wicks in the Mix podcast, my special guest, Charlie Farley. Yeah, thank you so much. The album is died. out. All I've been through. All I've been through. You've been through a lot. You're going to be going through a lot more. Uh, 2016 looking promising for you, my yes. friend. Record is fantastic. Make sure you guys go check it out. Check him out. Uh, baiting a hook out there at the FLW. Um, yeah, I'll be on the Archie Division. So y'all come out there to BFL. And let's have a good time. I'm all about. I love fishing, dude. <laughs> There's something about fishing. It just makes everybody quiet. I I mean, here, the thing is, I, my favorite fishing uh, was with my mom um, fishing for whiting off the, uh, off the coast in South Carolina. And she would, all week, she would catch whiting. And then Friday, that was the spoils of her... Uh, every morning out there so for me it was like that's 
And I haven't gone since I was a kid, you know. Right. And it's one of those things where it's like, man, I'd love to go. I'd love to go. So we need to get something set up where we come down and bring a podcast from a boat or something where we just give me an excuse to go fishing with Charlie Farley, yo. That would be amazing, actually. I don't know. You'd probably hate me. You'd be like, quit spilling shit. Get off. Get out of this boat. <laughs> Get out of this bed. <laughs> I'm like, why are you chumming? It can't for, be you as don't bad. chum for bass. <laughs> it, can't, <laughs> it can't be as bad as my son. He's not as bad as he used to be, but Lord of mercy. Now, how old is he now? He's uh, 10. 10? Yeah. And how, is he like the fish or is he like, oh, please, Dad? No. No. He loves the fish. Does he? I love the fish, but he makes me go. Like, come on, you're going, let's go. And I'm like, nah. I want to rest today. No, nope, we're going fishing. Let's go. That is, yeah, that's resting. So he's. Do you, does he ever play fishing video games? Uh, I'm sure he does because he loves video games. But he, he's more into that Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I guess that's what everybody's into. Flying games. God, I love Me? flying games. Me? I'm an NCAA Madden football dude. Mm. Like I'm football or basketball. I don't. I, I don't know. I don't want to kill people. I guess. <laughs> I don't want to kill people. <laughs> but I'm screw a fish. <laughs> <laughs> I release most of them. Come on. <laughs> Charlie, thank you so much. Good luck to you, man. 2016. Big time, big time. Hey, thanks for having me, buddy. Absolutely, brother.